Hey guys and welcome back to a new video and also a new playlist which is called Android Basics. With this new playlist I want to focus on explaining the core Android concepts which are purely used for native development. And this is also not only targeted towards beginners but also if you're already familiar with some Android development then this is also for you since all these basic Android concepts such as activities, the backstack and all these kinds of things are often only scratched on the surface but it definitely makes sense to go into these a bit deeper. So this playlist is not intended to make you an Android developer from nothing, but rather for those people who are new to the Android ecosystem or just want to deepen their knowledge. But on the one hand, it assumes that you know Kotlin, the programming language we use for native Android development. And I also won't cover any UI building here because for that I have my separate Jetpack Compose playlist. In this playlist, I will talk about things like activities, the life cycle, the backstack, broadcast receiver, services, intents, all these Android specific things. What I will leave out though are concepts that don't find much application now nowadays due to Jetpack Compose. So for example, fragments is a topic where I have an older video about, but I decided to not make a video about that in this playlist because most new Android apps nowadays just don't use that anymore due to Jetpack Compose. And in this first video, I want to talk about activities and their life cycle. So whenever you create a new Android Studio project, then you will end up with something like this. You will have a class main activity, which is in this case a co component activity. And Android Studio will generate an on create function, which you override here with some initial content, in this case with Jetpack Compose. We want to ignore this Jetpack Compose stuff here completely and focus on this outer thing, this activity, and what that actually is. An activity itself is kind of a container for one or multiple screens in your app. But that's only part of the truth. I wouldn't only see it as a container for screens, but rather as a unit of your app where your users interact with. And that is also why activities are called activities and not something like screen container. So this activity will contain information about if it's currently active on the screen, if it's in the background, it will also serve as an entry point for your app. So that means if a user comes to your app from another app, for example, your browser, um, if they click on a link or so which opens your app, then an activity is a component that directly gets launched from that action. And in the past, we usually did it that way that we had one activity per screen, then things changed a bit and we got fragments. So we often bundled the different related screens into one activity. So you might have one profile activity with a normal profile screen, um, a profile edit screen. So multiple screens are just bundled into one activity which hosts these different screens and then nowadays we got Jetpack Compose which usually means we will only have a single activity in our whole app. So in this case with the Jetpack Compose setup here we can have lots of screens as many as we want while staying in the single main activity. So in pure Jetpack Compose products, this main activity will just serve as the entry point for our application. So if another component, another app, for example, a system component needs to launch our app, then it needs to directly say, I want to launch this activity or I want to just launch this app and this is the starting activity of that. But the main characteristic of activities in Android is the so-called life cycle. So that means at some point our activity is born, so it's called created, and that is what this on create function stands for. And at some point it's not needed anymore, all its memory resources are freed up and it's destroyed. And in between there are just some steps that happen which move this activity into different so-called lifecycle states. And if you just take a look at the official activity lifecycle diagram from the Android documentation, we get to see this picture. This is the whole lifecycle, looks super complex, but let's break it down because once you understand it, it's actually fairly simple. As we already saw, once the activity is created, on create is called, so it will move into the created lifecycle state and that is just the place where we want to initialize our variables inside of that activity where we want to set the actual view so the actual UI content of that activity and just do some further setup and initialization. At this point the user does not see anything on the screen yet. After the created state it will start to move into the started state so on start will be called when that is complete. An activity is considered to be started when it becomes visible for the user. But at this point, the user still can't interact with it yet. So you can kind of compare this with a theater where the curtains open up initially and you can already see all the actors and everything from the play, but the play itself is not starting yet. However, after the started state, it will move into the resume state. When an activity is in the resume state, that means it's in the foreground, the user can interact with it. And that's also where it will stay until the user eventually moves away. So you can see here, the activity is running in this case, so it it will block the state until something is happening. And as you can see, as soon as another activity comes into the foreground, 
the life cycle state will move to on pause. And this is actually a bit inaccurate because it's not only um, moving to the pause state when another activity comes into the foreground, but when any different piece of UI comes into the foreground, for example, a dialogue, which doesn't need to be an activity. So at this point, all the resources the activity needs will still be kept in memory because the user might still come back to the activity, which is very likely if they see a dialogue or so, where they just need to apply some kind of um, action. But it could also be that they just navigate to different screen of their app where they might decide to click the back button and come back to the previous activity. And if that happens, so if the actual activity which is in the pause state comes back into the foreground, then you can see when the user returns to the activity, the life cycle will move back to the resume state. So it's in the foreground just as before and it will stay there until the user moves away again. But how do we now get from on pause to on stop? You can see the activity is no longer visible, but isn't this the same as moving away? Well, if the user navigates from one activity to another activity, then on stop will also be called and the life cycle state will move to the stop state. So what's then the difference between the stop state and the pause state? If an activity is in the stop state, you can be sure that it's not visible to the user anymore. If it's in the pause state, it could still be that the user or is seeing a dialogue and the actual activity that is paused is still uh, somehow in the background. So you can imagine um, just like on your desktop PC where you have different windows, so different activities and your browser might be in the background and you might have a smaller window in the foreground, which is your focus. So in that case, the browser, which is in the background and not focused would be in the pause state while the smaller window that is in the foreground is in the resume state since it has the user's focus. But as soon as the whole window is not visible anymore, it would be considered stopped. So that would be the case if the user navigates to another screen, since then only that new screen screen is visible on the screen and not the previous screen anymore. If the user then comes back when the activity is in the stop state, you can see then on restart is called, which is kind of a special function when the user comes back to an app that was minimized before and that was hidden. So this just gives you another callback to rack to exactly this uh, kind of use case. And after that on start will be called again. So um, the activity will be made visible to the user and then on resume where the user can finally interact with it again. But last but not least, as you saw, we also have on destroy. So what does need to happen that our activity really gets destroyed and all its resources get freed up? So this diagram says the activity is finishing or being destroyed by the system. What does finishing really mean? So usually that either means that you either intentionally closed it with the finish function inside of an activity or the user is currently on that activity and is active and then they click the back button because that tells the Android system I, I don't want to be active on this activity anymore please take me to the previous one so the um, current activity is not needed anymore and it will be destroyed or obviously as this uh, description here says if the system so the actual Android operating system needs memory and it might decide to kill your app then on destroy will also be invoked. There's also another special case in which the lifecycle will reach the destroyed state and that are so-called configuration changes. That means when some kind of global configuration changes, the most common example is a screen rotation. So when the user rotates the device, that means the layout the activity is showing also needs to be re-inflated. It again needs to be loaded from the resources maybe, or maybe there's a specific landscape layout. So everything will be set up from the very beginning again. And in that case, the whole activity will be recreated and uh, the life cycle will start from on create again as soon as the device is in landscape mode then. That doesn't only happen with screen rotations, but also for example, when switching the language of the device and many more, but I don't want to go that deep into these configuration changes in this video I will talk about that in another one but they come with more problems than you might think at first and if we now take a look back here in code then for all of these lifecycle states we have a function inside of an activity we can override to react to these so if we take a look here we can also override on start which is called as soon as the activity becomes visible as I said so here we could simply print something um, let's say on start. After on start, we would call on resume, which is called as soon as uh, the user can interact with the activity. So here we say print line on resume. We want to have one for on pause. Print line on pause. And let's have one for on stop. Print line on stop. One for destroy. Here we want to print something. And what is missing? We're missing on restart, 
which is called when uh, the user comes back to the app which was previously in the background. So here we say print line on restart. And let's also add such a log in on create since we're missing that right now. And if we then change this to on create and launch this app on our emulator and then also take a look in the log cat to see our logs. Let's just filter for these parentheses or better we replace this with system out. So now we see all these functions that get called and that is exactly what you just saw from the diagram I showed you. Initially on create is called, when that is done on start is called, and when that is done, so when the activity is visible to the user, then the lifecycle state will move in on resume. And if we take a look here on our emulator, this is currently an active activity. We see the screen, we see this hello Android text. So the user is currently interacting with the app. And that is why the state stays in resumed. If we now move away, so we minimize the app, for example, um, completely minimize it. Then you will see on pause and on stop is called. On pause because it moves into the background and on stop because it completely gets invisible to the user. And as you can see, that is the case. The user does not see anything of the activity anymore. And it's not just uh, seeing a dialogue or so where the activity is still in the background. And if we then get back to the activity right here, then you can see on restart is called, start and resume. So that is exactly what I showed you here. After on stop, user comes back to the activity, on restart is called, on start is called, on resume is called, and that is where it will stay again until the user does something, moves away or closes the app. Let's also quickly take a look at that when the user closes the app by just swiping it away. Then you will see um, on pause is called, on stop is called and on destroy is called. So then the activity is really destroyed. All the resources, all the UI is freed up. It's not kept in memory anymore. And to get it back on the screen, we would need to create a new one. There are certain cases where on stop and on destroy might not be called. So the Android system does not guarantee that these are always called. So if you have some very important data to save, for example, before the user leaves the app, I would always do that in on pause. But other than that, that is how activities and the lifecycle works. If you enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a subscribe and don't miss the next Android basic videos. You'll get two new videos here every single week, Wednesday and Sunday. So definitely stay tuned. I wish you an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you back in the next video. Bye bye.